So we we'll begin the program at this time. Audhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I want to thank everyone for joining us for this uh, family event. As you know, we have our esteemed guest speaker, Brother Anis Rahman, uh, who is the national coordinator of Young Muslims, one of the largest youth organizations in the country. Uh, uh, he's been with us uh, this weekend in his uh, one of his responsibilities is to visit the various chapters of YM. So he was visiting Houston uh, this weekend. So he sat earlier today with uh, about uh, 70 uh, YM members over at Bear Creek Masjid and, and joined us. So for a very beneficial talk and uh, a lot of those brothers were able to make it out here today. Uh, just a little background about um, Anis, not too much. But uh, he is from, um, from California, from Los Angeles. He graduated from uh, California State University uh, in accounting. And then after that, he also uh, completed his CPA. Currently, he's working um, at Deloitte. And uh, he served uh, a few terms on the National Shura of Young Muslims. Uh, and then after that, um, in, this pre in this last term, he was elected the National Coordinator. And so with that, without any further delay, I'll turn it over to him. But first... Um, we have a few t-shirts right here, the Young Muslims t-shirts, uh, uh, they have various designs on them, and so uh, we about, I think we have three of them, three of them, and we're going to be giving them out um, at the end of the talk, and, uh, but it's kind of a competition, so out of the content of his speech, there's going to be about three questions made, so anyone who can answer those three questions, we're going to give the shirts to you, and brothers and sisters can both participate. So without any further delay, I'll turn it over to Anis. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it's uh, great to be here. It's an honor to be here. This is my first time here in Houston. Uh, like uh, Brother Musab said, I'm from uh, Los Angeles. So when I got on the plane, it was uh, 78 degrees, uh, sunny Southern California. And then when I landed here, it was about 45 degrees. So it was pretty freezing. But uh, Alhamdulillah, I think I've been cold the entire day, but my jacket has been keeping me warm. So just JazakAllah uh, khair for having me. Um, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that He has given us. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us life and first and foremost for making us Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Baqarah, He starts the, the Surah and a few pages down, Allah subhanahu wa says, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that He has placed on this earth as we human beings as Khalifa, as people that are in charge of this world. Um, as, since we're in charge of this, we have a responsibility as well. And that responsibility is that we have to fulfill the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, you know, He's created generations and He's created generations after generations and all the way from Adam alayhi salam. So if you look at the topic of today's discussion, the topic is, does anybody know what the topic is? What's the title? Anybody, just shout it out. Prepare the next generation. I heard it. So in order for us to talk about that, preparing the next generation, I wanted to first look at this topic through the lens of the Quran. And if... If you go to Quran.com and you try to search uh, the Quran and you just type in the word generation, you will see there are so many ayats, so many uh, verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the past generations. So, وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنِ He talks about all these past generations that he's destroyed. So he's giving an example, he's talking to the Quraysh, and he says all those people, all those past generations, we destroyed them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them because of what? Because of their disobedience. Because of the fact that they disobeyed. So Allah is giving an example. He's showing us that, hey, don't be like them because I destroyed them because of their disobedience. So don't fall in the same, in the same footsteps. So the thing is, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that, He's talking about past generations, right? There's one verse in the Qur'an, one verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a losing generation. So this is a generation that's uh, 
This is a generation that's, uh, that didn't meet the expectation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ وَرِثُ الْكِتَابِ In Surah Al-A'raf. He says, basically, فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْف The word khalf, it means a generation that's very stagnant, that's not doing too well, basically a failing generation. And khalaf, if you put a fatha on the lamb, right, it means a successful generation, a generation that's successful. So basically what Allah is saying here, there's this generation that came after a successful generation, and this generation's not doing too well. What did these generation do? Did they need to search for guidance? No. Waritul kitab, these this generation inherited the book, meaning they were Muslim. They had the guidance. Allah had given them guidance. But what happens to this generation is that they fall in the motives, in, in the desires of this life. And they chase the desires of this life. And then you know what they say? After they're doing all these things, they say, it's okay, we'll be alright, Allah's gonna forgive us. You know those people that say, Allah is ghafoor rahim, don't worry about it, inshallah we'll be okay. So these people, first they're chasing the desires of this dunya, then afterwards they're, they're saying, it's okay, inshallah we'll be forgiven. And then Allah says, if you ask them to do anything, if you ask them to run after anything except deen, they will go for it. You know what that means is that they're always following the trend. They're always following the new thing that's going on. And I just wanted to take this into perspective into nowadays. If you look at the, the times that we're living in right now, here in America, we're living in a time where basically technology is at its best. It's making the world smaller. And at the same time, this technology is something that you know everyone wants to get. Everyone wants the latest the latest thing, the latest technology. How many of you guys here have the, the new iPhone 6? Anybody get it? No, nobody's been praying Qiyam al hard enough to get the iPhone 6. So a lot, everyone wants the latest thing. Or like social media is completely changing the way we interact. For example, first, when I was in high school, there was a, this thing called MySpace, right? You guys, some people remember MySpace. Then it was Facebook, then it's Twitter. And now, what's the latest thing, guys? Come on, help me out. Snapchat. 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 Okay. So now it's Snapchat and Insta. People say Insta. I don't know why. They don't say the whole entire thing. IG or Insta. But Snapchat. So these are the new things that are just changing constantly. And what people do is usually just following the trend. And they want the, the next thing and the newest thing. Whether it's... Some people even go through, like, outfit-wise. Whether it's the trend is to wear these baggy jeans that can probably fit two people in them, but you're gonna wear them because it's trendy. Or it's the ne other trend is that you're gonna wear skinny jeans so tight that even oxygen can't get in there. They're so tight. And then, you know, some people go through phases. First, it's the, the heavy metal phase. Then it's like the hip hop phase. Then after that, it's the pretty boy phase. So these little trends that everyone is going through, they, they, they just, it's just one after the next, one after the next. There's no, there's no thought. There's no like, what's right, what's wrong. It's whatever's the cool thing out there. So I wanted to kind of bring this because, you know, we got to take things into perspective. If we're going to talk about preparing the next generation, we got to talk about what, uh, what time and place we're living in right now. So I talked about you know technology and how everything's changing. We're trying to, people are trying to get into trends. The other thing is, and this is a little bit more serious topic, is that us living here in America, Islam is the talk. Everyone wants to talk about it. It's like the center of attention. Everyone wants to know non-Muslims, whether it's your uh, colleagues, whether whether it's your coworkers, whether it's people in school. Everyone wants to know about Islam. It's something that's been talked about every single time, especially the things that are happening in the media, the things, these groups that are coming up like ISIS and all those other groups. All of these things are just bringing Islam, you know, people want to know about it. People want to know what are these groups doing? Why are they like this? What is Islam? What do you guys believe in? All these things people want to know about. And the thing is, it's, it's causing us to make sure that we know our deen in and out from A to Z. And the, the other thing is, we're also coming across 
very uh, many obstacles as well. While I was driving here, there's you know obviously the thing that's going on overseas, the Middle East um, between Gaza and you know Israel, right? All the, the entire conflict that's going on that's been uh, covered by the media a lot. It's a, there's a lot of like, you know, Islamophobia and pro-Israeli like propaganda everywhere that we, you know, our Muslims are, are un, like, yeah, they're basically, we have to face that. So I was, as I was driving here from, you know, from LA, as I was driving on the freeway, I was going to the airport, I see a billboard and the billboard says, Hamas launches rockets and wants to destroy Israel. That was the billboard. And it's, it's these things that, you know, when the, there's these ads that you see, you probably noticed in Washington, D.C., and like Islamophobia, like anti-Islamic ads, they will put them on the buses in Washington, D.C. So these things have to, like, you know, they, what they do is they trigger us to make sure that we, we know our faith in and out. And we make sure that we know what we're going to do. So... The thing is, there's a lot of there's a lot of misconceptions. There's a lot of people want to know what are we what are we what do we believe in? Like nowadays, the it's even getting to be. I just recently read the news, is that um, for all the stuff that's going on in the Middle East, all the you know the, what the whatever the media is covering, all the Muslim organizations or Muslim people that have bank accounts. There is a force, there, is, there are people that are threatening these banks and they're saying that, you know, if you're, if you're ever making any transfer overseas or anything like that, they're pushing these banks and they're saying, close down the bank accounts for these Muslims. So the banks, they don't want to get involved in this litigation, so instead of getting involved with that, they just contact these Muslim owners, these Muslim bank account owners of the Muslim organization and they shut down their accounts. It's an article that I just read, and CARE is actually working through with it, and they filed a lawsuit with the Department of Justice. But you can see that, you know, the time that we're living in, it's, it's serious. It's something that we've got to take seriously. We have to take our deen seriously, because the challenges that we face nowadays, especially as youth, it's something serious. So, now that I've give, given, like, a brief introduction of this, now I'm going to actually get to the topic itself. Preparing the next generation. Who, was, who is the next generation? The next generation is... The, us, the youth, right? Uh, and again, some people are like, I'm so old, don't worry, you're still the youth, don't worry about it. So the thing is, we, we have to, in order to prepare the generation, I've done youth, I've done youth work for about 10 years. I've, I've traveled across the country, I've been to different parts of uh, the world as well, just looking at Muslim youth. And I've noticed that there's similar trends that happen all across the country. There's certain, certain groups that I've seen and certain type of youth that I've seen that, you know, I want to discuss today. And it's not to just point out weaknesses or point out faults, but it's to learn some lessons that we can do and to reflect on these groups of youth. So group number one, there's the one group that I've seen is this group that, uh, of youth that are very into their academics. They're very active and involved and in, into their studies. They study and, you know, because they have this uh, thing for their parents, their parents want them to be successful, they want them to have nice jobs and become, you know, successful and rich. So what they do is they, they really encourage, they don't want failure from their children. So they say, study and make sure you focus on your studies. And the child is also very focused on the studies as well. And I think that's great. And I think we, as Muslims, need to make sure that we take education seriously here in America. Because uh, for those of us who are coming from back home, we know how hard it is to get education. So if we're here, we have this opportunity. But the one thing that happens if, if we take that scenario into the extreme portion, the extreme side of it is that that person doesn't understand, doesn't learn, that youth doesn't learn the deen that much. And they're just so focused on their studies, and they're just so focused on what they're trying to do, their goal, is that they don't learn, they don't learn how to become Muslim. So when they're faced with these situations that I mentioned, these real life obstacles, the problem that happens is that they don't know how to explain their deen to people. You know, we, like, I'm working as well in, in a professional environment. A lot of people have questions, and a lot of people want to know about Islam, and it's a great, like, Dawah opportunity, people want to know, why don't you drink? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you go to happy hour? So it's a lot of these things that, you know, we need to be able to explain. 
So the the and the, the fear that I see that I've seen for, with these with these group of youth is that you know they they tend to become those you know you don't want to put a label on people but they tend to become those people the Ramadan Muslims or the Eid Muslims and they start slowly and slowly stop coming to the masjid or starting learning about their faith and what happens is generation like the next generation that follows them they don't know anything about Islam and they don't know anything about their faith and then they what happens is these kids they have more non-Muslim friends than they have Muslim friends and that's where it gets to be a very serious issue so that's the one one group of uh, youth that I've seen the second group of uh, youth that I've seen the second group is those people that are really into their deen these people you know they're coming to the masjid they're doing all they can do and they're the ones that are speaking you know uh, giving the khutbahs and all those things but the problem the danger that happens with some of these youth is that they sometimes fall short on their studies they get so involved in their islamic work and they get so involved in that work that their um, academic their academics they, they kind of fall short they start to see that their friends are becoming you know going to this university or becoming this going into this profession have this job and then while well, they're just you know still in community college and trying to get through school and the thing is that's also very very scary because then what happens is that person who is involved in the deen who's been learning about the deen what happens is that person gets disheartened um, there's this sort of um, basically they're overcome with something that um, everyone around me all my peers are doing so well and I'm just here so what happens is they completely just distance themselves from from the faith and they say I just need to focus and I need to forget about my faith I just need to do this and that's it which is again you gotta have a balance you can't just be doing on one side and you can't go on the other side as well the third group of youth that I've seen the third group is these are group these are youth that are you know not too uh, academically strong in their in their academics they're not too strong in that side they're not too involved in the masjid these people are just kind of just hanging out they're just, just chilling living life as it is and these people they're they're just breezing by but the problem is the danger that I see with these youth is that they they're very they're very prone to fall into into sin or into basically what happens is their life becomes very normal and they need something to to like you know make their life unique or meaningful so what happens is they start falling into these sins or falling into drugs or all those things that we should be staying away from so I talked about these these three groups right and the reason I'm bringing up these groups is because I want to make sure that our youth are not falling into this trap Again, as Brother Musab mentioned, um, I come from an organization, I'm part of an organization called Young Muslims. It's an organization that is doing work for the youth for so many years and is doing it all across the country. And alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm very honored to say that you know, we have youth that not just on one side or the other side. We have youth that are balanced. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا That He has made this nation a balanced nation. So we as human beings have to be balanced as Muslims. So alhamdulillah, people, there are people in YM that are learning their deen and at the same time they are excelling in their academic career. These people are going on to becoming the next doctors, the next engineers, the next lawyers, businessmen, all those people and they're making sure that they have a strong foundation of the deen as well. And you know what? We don't have to just talk about those youth, that, the groups that I mentioned and the, the, the negative things about them. Alhamdulillah, I think now, you know, 10 years ago, looking at the youth right now, I think we're in a much better, much better position. Youth not right now are very, you know, I think we're very excited and we're very like, if we want to do something, we get it done. If we put our mind to it, we get it done. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of youth want to learn about Islam and they have this desire to learn and to, to gain ilm. So that's a very good thing. And at the same time, for those people that have a strong foundation of the deen and they become to do great things, like for example, does anybody know who Hussein Abdullah is? Raise your hand. Okay. You know when he goes on, on Facebook and or he posts a picture 
and people are commenting left and right and they're saying wow you you're amazing and he says that you know I'm gonna take off one year of NFL and go do Hajj people are just you know non-muslims they're just praising and they're saying oh wow you're doing such a great thing while wow, you're fasting and you're you know you're training so these people are making such a huge impact on Islam why by what just playing football and being Muslim but being a being a Muslim and acting and practicing Muslim these are people that are making a huge difference in people's lives and at the same time, the people in YM as well. We actually have, we, we just launched a webinar, an online webinar, which uh, all of you took, so we have basically alumni that are in these professional fields. And our youth, we want to make sure, we want to show parents, we want to show the entire community that we're not just here to mess around or to, to make sure that we don't, we, we want to make sure that our youth focuses on academics as well. So we launched this webinar and basically uh, we picked one field and every single month it's an online webinar through Facebook. So uh, we picked one field. So last month it was, um, or actually two weeks ago, it was medicine. So people obviously like 70% of like basically every Pakistani Indian person wants or their parents want them to become doctors, right? So everyone, we, we picked that field and we said, okay, uh, we're going to have an alumni. An alumni, his name was Dr. Arif Hussain. He gave, you know, a, an overview of the profession, of what he's doing right now, uh, how the field is, and we had actually a very, very successful response. We had questions from all over the country. We had people viewing from around the globe, not just in the U.S., asking questions. A lot of sisters as well, they asked questions. What, what is it like for me if I want to pursue this, this profession of medicine? So, alhamdulillah, I think that's been very successful and we, we plan on continuing it every single month. We pick one profession and we go through, we have alumni that are able to do this. So I, again, the focus that I wanted to do, and I'm, I'm not going to take too much time, I want to open this up to, to Q&A if anybody has any questions. But in order for us to prepare the next generation, we need to make sure that they are sound in academics. They're, they're sound in their Islamic knowledge and they're sound in their academic knowledge in school, you know, school knowledge. Once you have that strong foundation, and that strong foundation is built within these youth, then they can do whatever they want. You can, you, not every single youth here, not everyone here has to be an alim. Okay, that's not, you can, you just have to have the basic foundation of Islam. If you want to be the next Kobe Bryant, that's fine, you know. Uh, and I'm from LA, so, you know, we like the Lakers and the Clippers, and I think you guys have Dwight Coward. So, uh, I think he's doing alright so far. So, whatever you want to do, whatever, whatever career and profession you want to pursue, you go ahead and do that as long as you have this strong foundation of Islam. That you are able to go to non-Muslims and you are able to tell people about Islam. And you are able to tell them what this, this beautiful religion is. That's the, the goal that we're trying to achieve. And Alhamdulillah, I think this, uh, today, like, as Brother Musa we had a citywide neighbor net, a YM neighbor net, where brothers gathered from all over the city. I think some brothers drove from an hour and a half, like Clear Lake. And also, I noticed people in Houston, you guys have some weird, funny names like Clear Lake and Bear Creek, like all these nature type names of your cities. I don't know what's, what's going on over there. But it, the, these, these people drove from like, you know, all over the city and we had about, you know, 70 brothers just gathered for the sake of Allah. And uh, we have these meetings every single week. And I was just doing the math on the plane. And from across the globe, we have at least, at least 500 brothers and sisters that meet consistently every single week for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, I'm going to um, open it up now to the floor to anybody that has any questions about. Um, and again, the youth out there, look, I, I've been through this position. Like, the way, so I work at Deloitte. It's, it's a public accounting firm. And I'm going to be honest, the reason I'm there right now, the reason I got to where I am, it's because of YM. It's because I was in YM. Because in YM, I was able to get those soft skills that are necessary in your career. The communication skills, the leadership skill, the project management, all those things. When I sat in interviews and I told people that, yeah, I organized this convention and I organized this conference and this many, 700,000 people came and I gave communication here and there, they were just, they were baffled. They didn't, they didn't understand that, you know, we, like people in YM get this training so young and so early that by the time they're in their professional fields, they're 
masters at it. They're per they're perfect at it, and that they're actually excelling more than their coworkers. So again, this I'm my time right now is to give back to the youth. So again, if anyone here wants to any advice on career, if you want to talk about a different type of career, business, whatever it is, you know, definitely talk to me. If you want to shoot me your resume and want me to look at your resume, I'll be more than happy to. If you want to take some of my time, like do a, a mock four interview, I have an interview coming up. What question I should prepare for? Definitely reach out to me. I'm here for you guys, and I want to make sure I'm a resource. So again, if there's any questions that you guys have, uh, I'm going to open up the floor. Uh, if not, then inshallah we will um, close it up. And you can just raise your hand or shout it out, whatever is easier for you. Yes, go so, ahead. Uh, for youth, like, you know, you said how to be balanced with, like, what would be the expectation for, like, in teenagers that say about, like, 17, 18? What would be their expectation on both sides of the... Okay, good question. So the question was, if I, if there's a youth 17, 18 years old, what's the expectation from, you know, the both sides of it, like the Islamic knowledge and the school knowledge? So 17, 18 years old, you're probably still in high school, unless you're doing that. I don't know if you guys have this in Houston, but there's some students that do this, um, it's called the Chespi, which you graduate high school early and you go to college early. But anyway, but let's just say you're in high school right now. At this point, I would say if I was to go back and I was a 17, 18 year old, I would make sure that I don't waste my time. That's number one. And make sure that I invest my time in whatever I'm going to do. I make sure I have an idea of what career I want to get into, whatever it is. Whatever field I want to get into, I, I would talk to those people. I would talk to those people that are already in the profession and make sure I have an idea so I can make sure when, I'm in, when I go to college, it's already decided. I'm not taking, I'm not goofing around and taking classes here and there because I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I already have a, a set mind in place and I'm, I'm going ahead and doing that. In terms of Islamically, I would make sure, um, this is me just personally, but I would make sure that I would memorize the Book of Allah. Because if I'm going to live my life as a Muslim, I want to make sure that the Quran is in my heart for the rest of my life. I would not only just memorize it, but I would understand it as well. I would try to learn some Arabic and learn some uh, few phrases here and there and try to understand the Quran that's being read so that way I can improve upon my knowledge. And I, also the other thing that I forgot to mention is that NYM, what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop Islamic literacy. So again, like I said before, not everyone has to be an alim, but what we're trying to do is develop this basic foundation of Islamic literacy. And we have a curriculum in place, a, a study circle system, where people in our organization will go through this system, and on a part-time basis, basically on the weekends, they will be trained and they have a curriculum to follow so that they have basic understanding of Quran, of Hadith, of Islamic history. And they have this basic foundation, so that way if they want to go and pursue Further knowledge, they can go ahead and do that with other venues that are out there. So hopefully that answered your question. Anybody else? Anybody? Sisters, if there's any questions. You have questions? For the shirts. Yeah, there's questions for the shirts. We can do them right now? Okay. All right. Who wants a shirt? Go for it. Okay, so for those of you who came a little bit late, what happened was we had these uh, t-shirts uh, that uh, Anish was able to bring us, and these are YM National t-shirts. Uh, we sell them at our conventions, and uh, if someone wants, if one of the younger brothers want to hold it up so the sisters can see, more than welcome to. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but we do have one, two, three, four. Okay, so uh, we have four t-shirts. So two will be, just to be fair, Two will be able, will do the competition. Uh, so, two of the questions, the brothers will be rewarded with it, and two of them, the sisters. Uh, what is this? Okay, so I'm sure the sisters don't want the brotherhood shirt. So. The bro this brotherhood. This is gonna be for the brothers, because it says brotherhood. I've seen on. that shirt before. My okay, uncle has this. one. Okay, and then. This one, this one, you don't have to hold this one, this one, yeah, hold this one up, you can hold this one up, on that side. I'm Alright, so, uh, 
to just to do over on that channel. So uh, just to be fair, um, we'll do the we'll do the brothers first. So we have four different questions, so they don't have to steal. So first one is for the Brotherhood shirt. Basically, uh, I'll try to at least if you could find whichever brother raises his hand first, and. Uh, and so if all the brothers can get in seeing range of Anis, the first question goes for the Brotherhood shirt. <clears throat> Who can tell us the verse which he recited at the beginning? It doesn't have to be the exact Arabic and English, but if you can give us a rough... Oh, no, no, I'm just checking. You can give us even, even, <laughs> even the theme of the first verse. Who, who has it? Uh, we are... Say it again. Is that it? Yeah. That's it. Um, that okay. brotherhood. Uh, he has many other shirts as well, but added to his collection. Okay. Um, okay. No. The second question is, uh, who can uh, name, at the conclusion of his talk, he mentioned certain services which he is willing to, to give to the, to the brothers. Let me finish the question, please. <laughs> unless, I mean, unless you want to give the answer, but then you won't be able to. Okay. Can you name at least four of the services which he offered? Go for it. Medical. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a doctor. Sorry. No, but you want to take it. Let me explain it, and I'll let you take it. He offered certain things which he's willing to help young professionals do. So if you can name four of those. He, he helped to uh, uh, build the foundation of Islam. To be a little bit more specific, he said, you can call me and I'll do this, 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 build, this. Build the basics of Islam. Uh, help young Muslims try to build, uh, build up their knowledge, try to help them balance between academics and Islamic deen. And, um... Okay, okay, listen, listen. This is all I'm saying. That wasn't the question, that wasn't the answer I was looking for. But because you tried so hard, there's a neighbor net coordinator here who has a shirt that he's willing to give you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, but that wasn't the answer I was looking for. But I mean, it was good. It showed you were paying attention, but that was not the answer I was looking for. Uh, go ahead, Rian. Uh, he said uh, if you need to like take a look at your resume, he'll fix it up. This one. And this one. that you can call him uh, for anything and talk about different careers. Okay, two. Uh, about different careers, and then, um, he said, yeah, business. Yeah, you can't. You're going to wear a shirt with him? Oh, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> you got to help your brother yeah, out, right? Can't call a friend. Uh, what, what, was the, what was the third one? Uh, <laughs> Thanks for playing. <laughs> Are we his hand up next? Uh, so. you, name the, you have to name all four of them, so the two that he said as well. Okay, so one was like the resume review. Okay. Any advice related with the career? Okay. Uh, mock interview. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would give you 75% of the shirt, but that's not possible. You need the full oh, thing. Go, it's all or nothing. If anyone can give an answer better, but right now he's the reigning. Oh, yeah. Anybody want to take a go at the final resource that he offered? Go for it, man. Him right there. So, Mark, go ahead. He said that they have a, they have a people who are helping for the, what career you want to choose for. Is that the I mean, you're on the right track, but that's not oh, specific. No, 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 no. Yeah, uh, brother Ahmed had uh, that is end up next. Resume. He already said resume. Come on, Amar in the back. Uh, career advice, resume, mock interview, and digital services. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, can I do that? <laughs> Wait, Omar, I'll let you take a go at the final. Say the offering class to help you like settle down your basic structures of Islam. Look into careers. If you need any advice in life, he can assist you with that. Okay, and the two that, and the other three that were. You have to name all the three that have been mentioned um, and what you said. He can help you with your resume. If you want to call him, he can assist you in stuff you want to do. Okay, and the last one? You name three of them. Um, something to do with... Uh, mock interview. Yeah, mock interview. There you go. <laughs> Alright, uh, so for the sisters, um, I guess... 
If you kids could figure out who raised their hand first. Uh, <laughs> question number one. He mentioned he did the math on the plane. How many kids meet ev or how many youth meet every week? How many how many youth meet every week for their neighbor nets? Figure out who raised their hand first and uh, call on them, please. Go ahead. We don't have 7,000 yet, we'll get there one day. You can ask Ask I get the shirt yet. I'm sorry, it's two and two. Looks like it. Okay, there you go. And uh, final question. Um, in the, it, towards the beginning of his talk, he mentioned several trends that uh, you go through. Like, uh, he, he mentioned a lot of trends, so let me specify a little bit. Uh, are you guys, are you guys watching who's... Anis, I think you just got it. Anis will help out with uh, figuring out... Uh, put your hands out so I can complete the question, please. Uh, he mentioned several trends that you go through as they're growing up in ways that they dress and act and stuff like that. So, uh, name three of those trends. Boom. One of them. Um, pretty boys. <laughs> that's, that's two. Okay. <laughs> One more. Heavy metal. Ding, ding, ding. Is it? Uh, can I see that shirt first, real quick? So, um, this particular shirt on the back, it has all the neighbor nets listed. So those five hundred that he mentioned, this has it's a map of all all those neighbor nets. So go ahead and give this to him. Uh, so. If you missed the shirts, uh, this actually also a reminder that Anis will be back in a few weeks at the uh, convention. We had the flyer on the door, but it just fell off. But at the convention, which I'm sure by now everyone here is probably already going to is registered for. If not, I would recommend doing that as soon as possible before registration closes down. Uh, that the second annual or uh, seventh annual or eighth annual ICNA South Convention will be that will be held at the Marriott Hotel on uh, Beltway and Westheimer. Um, and there's a lot of speakers that will be there and you know a lot of people come for Nomad and Lusan and Omar Salman and stuff like that but also we have in the lineup a lot of uh, a, a few youth who grew up in YM who grew up just like all you guys you know um, like what he mentioned went through YM and were able to not only graduate from YM uh, or, and, but are also giving back to it and uh, Anish Rahman is one of them and another is Qasim Masar who is an alumni and so these two uh, also will be there along with so many other speakers. And so we're going to be addressing topics such as these and we will have exclusive sessions for the YM members. So um, <clears throat> I highly recommend that everyone comes there. And if you wanted one of these shirts and weren't able to get one, we will have more at the convention as well. You can stop by the YM booth. And so with that... Um سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا عصر إن الإنسان في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا صالحات ودواسوا بالحق ودواسوا بالصبر ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزل قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا من كون من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واعتق لقابنا من النار اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واعتق لقابنا من النار اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واعتق لقابنا من النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين